Hi friends, this is Pat, and you're listening to the I Used to Think podcast. Today we have a special short episode for you. This past week, I returned from a trip to Japan with my friends Ricky and Nathan. We visited Japan for two weeks, and we were in the cities of Osaka, T- Tokyo, and Kyoto. One of the reasons for taking this trip, other than just to have a good time, was to specifically take Ricky to Japan. Ricky has a deep appreciation of Japanese culture, Japanese cuisine, and fashion, yet has never been before. And so this was a trip essentially for Ricky to have the vacation of a lifetime. And throughout this episode, we asked Ricky whether or not Japan has met his expectations. So after each city, I asked him a couple of questions, asking him whether the experience was what he thought it was. And we cover a lot of things. We talk about the food, obviously. Ricky talks about how much he loves the bidets. We talk about different experiences we have. Uh, And we even end the episode with a brief conversation about Japanese fashion. So this is a very casual episode, uh, also a way just to keep track of our travel adventures. And I hope you enjoy. I'm here with Ricky. We've been sitting in a plane for 11 hours. Sleep deprived. How's the flight been for you so far? We're surviving. We're all terribly rested, definitely in our right minds. (laughs) What was your impression of the food you got on this flight? Man, there's a surprising amount of spiciness, you know, that awaken your senses when you're up in the air and everything is sort of blunted. Appreciated that, appreciated the variety. And compared to all of my other airplane food experiences, it was delightful. What have you been watching on your, on your uh, TV here in front of you? Been watching our lovely little in-flight diagrams where we are on the map. Watched a pretty bitterly disappointing movie called Fall Guy. And then I listened to my uh, my Jane Austen audiobook, as one does. You should uh, bring up that island you saw on the on the map as you were following the flights. We we flew over a little known island called Un Alaska Island. Just an incredible, creative, innovative name for any island that's not Alaska. One thing's for certain, it's not Alaska. Um, what are what are things that you're looking forward to on this trip? Number one is public restrooms with with super powered toilets that have like ten different buttons on them and bidet and I'm I'm just I'm thrilled to experience that. The food nature trudging around in a little bit of rain. I, all of it really. In your mind right now, what is Osaka going to be like? Extremely, extremely green. A nice blend between rural and urban. (laughs) I I don't have a whole lot of preconceived notions. (laughs) But I expect to have a wonderful time. Is there there something that you're craving right now after a 12-hour flight? Ice cream? Uh, sushi, anything that you think will make this flight worth it as soon as you walk off the plane? Lord. I want <clears throat> I want to try one of those okonomiyaki. No, no, no. Yes. That and the, the takoyaki with the octopus in the middle. Even though I've been traumatized by terrible rubber octopus experiences in the past, I'm ready to give it a chance, another chance in Japan. <laughs> Oh gosh, it does. Please hold the nearest handrail or strap. Now arriving at main terminal. We arrived at at Kyoto not too long ago. We're currently walking to a garden, holding our cups of coffee. What is your impression of Kyoto so far, Ricky-san? Well, first off, I'd like to say that the bathrooms have more than lived up to my expectation. 
We just went to a, a Japan Mexican restaurant that had that had mouthwash and toothpicks available in the bathroom, which is a wonderful touch. It's it's just the right amount of urban balanced with natural beauty, a little less chaotic. Wonderful coffee, excellent service. I'm just I'm in paradise. Now that you've left Osaka, what impression has Osaka left on you? I think I think I was not expecting it to be as hustle and bustle as it was, which I, I liked it, but I it's sort of how I imagined Tokyo would feel. So I guess Tokyo is just gonna be like Osaka, but a hundred times more hustle and bustle. But I enjoyed it. What is your overall impression of the Japanese people now that you've interacted with quite a few of them? Well, I think when you're having an interaction, they're exceedingly accommodating and polite. I've noticed strangers don't talk to strangers. Like nobody's acknowledging each other on like just on the streets. No eye contact, really. No eye contact. <laughs> so it's kind of nice. It, it, it's kind of exactly what you want. It's like I'm not getting not getting roped into conversations with strangers. But when you do interact with them, it's exceedingly pleasant and cordial. On a scale of one to ten. 10 being I'm as awake as I could ever be, and one being I could roll over and fall asleep right now. How jet lagged are you? I'm through the worst of it. I've got the cold brew in my right hand right now. I'm through our the food coma from our recent meal. I'm ready, I'm, I'm locked and loaded. So that'd be a seven, eight? No, I'm, I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed. I'm ready to go. Wow. All right, some high praise for Kyoto. Thank you for your time, Ricky-san. Arigatou gozaimasu. I'm here with Mr. Ricky-san. We have just landed in Tokyo after taking the bullet train, which we've learned can reach speeds over 200 miles per hour. Now let me ask first, how was your experience in Kyoto, Mr. Ricky-san? Oh, just exquisite. Had my, had an otherworldly massage yesterday. <laughs> The details of which I cannot go into. And then we had the best hamburger <laughs> of all time, as one would expect to get in Kyoto. So it's just been been wonderful. Just for clarification, it, it was a it was a very appropriate massage. Yeah, I just didn't want to go into the details <laughs> of us getting like like a, a half a pound of dead skin scrubbed off after having the food in Kyoto. <laughs> Would you say that the dining experience in Osaka or Kyoto is one is better than the other? I think we had more mind-blowing meals in Kyoto, if I'm not mistaken. What was your favorite by far? I think it's a tie between the, that curry spot we went to and the hamburger that we had yesterday. Can you describe to me the flavors of your hamburger? Joy, happiness, contentment were the main ones, but I, I can't even adequately describe it in words. Oh, mine had wasabi in it, but I'm, it sounds like yours is a lot better. <laughs> yes, mine was a little more transcendent than that. Doing this interview is tough when you have 200 people surrounding you at all times. What are you expecting from Tokyo? With sock on steroids, uh, wanting to like crawl into a hole and be my, myself for like a week afterwards. Well, I'm happy for you, Mr. Ricky Son, that you have 30 years of dead skin scraped off your body. Yes, we're both better men because of it. Now that you've experienced the three big convenience stores in Japan, Family Mart, 7 Eleven, and Lawson's, would, would you say you have a preference? I don't feel like I was able to give them all a fair shake. So I experienced the food most at me. Family Mart. But I'm just kind of biased towards 7-Eleven. I mean, no, there's, there's certainly magic about it to me because I know how terrible our 7-Elevens are. To see this one, it's just completely upends any expectation 
that you had of what a 7-Eleven could be. So go on 7-Eleven. I noticed that you're partial towards the smoothie drinks they offer. Can you describe to the listener what those were? Everything that you would have in a smoothie in perfectly organized little cubes inside of uh, the cod. And then you scan it, it opens up this wonderful little self-service smoothie machine. And then you have that. It's always exciting. You never know. And the machine, it blended the smoothie for you, is that right? Sure did. And it, and it blocked out all the noise. If they had those instant smoothies in, in the United States, I'd probably have one every day during the summer. Yes, we all, we'd all get diabetes. I'm here once again with Ricky Sun. We are on day 13 of our trip to Japan, and it's almost over. How do you feel, Ricky? Well, Pat, as you and I were discussing <clears throat> a little earlier, we're finally now, in the last day or two, feeling fully recovered, just in time to go home. <laughs> so, yes, it's true. We were hit with mysterious illness that I think Ricky brought over. Nobody knows for sure. <laughs> that I know I was certainly sick when I came. We can't be certain who got Pat sick. All three of us were had some sort of rep- respiratory illness for most of the trip, but thankfully we are feeling better now, as Ricky said, during the final days. Uh, what are some of the more memorable meals you've had here in Tokyo? Well, today we had some classic Japanese-style American food, which consisted of a Hamburg steak, you know, that classic American meal, with an omelet served over ketchup accented rice. And it was lovely. Um, what was the best meal we had? Oh, the best. Probably the beef. Was the yakimiku. Yeah. That uh, Japanese barbecue, essentially. It's like the greatest beef of all time. I mean, like, you grilled up and then you, you just would rub it a couple times on this beautiful little personal like salt block they gave you it was it was just a delightful i've never had beef that was the texture of sushi i could say that for sure i mean i could have eaten that with dentures <laughs> i've been I've barely not that i don't have my full set of teeth but if i didn't that'd be in good shape well good to know you can you could eat that when you're when you have dentures yeah How would you describe the people in Tokyo? Are they any different than the last two cities we've been in? I mean, Nathan indicated that they're a little colder, but given that we're only interacting with people in the service industry, everyone in the service is just as good, just as warm, just as polite. So I can't speak for passersby, but the service is just top notch. Everyone. Everyone welcomes you, everyone, everyone says goodbye. They notice the smallest details, like when we were at dinner last night, Nathan dropped one of his chopsticks and they saw like a cross from the other side of the room and just that. like immediately come with another pair of chops. I'm like, come on, it's insane. And we can't even tip them. The people I actually want to tip, I can't tip, and then I have to tip the person at Chipotle for taking my order. Yeah, we've expressed some anti-tipping sentiment since being exposed to Japanese culture. Do you think? True. We apologize in advance to all the, the the entire American dining industry for for not tipping when we get back. (laughs) We're giving you forewarning. I wanted to highlight our experience at the Animal Cafe. Can you describe that experience? Have you ever felt, been over, so overwhelmed by like an overdose of cuteness that it, it hurts. That's, that's what I was feeling. It was just so much cuteness. My brain couldn't process it fully. That's why I said like these hedgehogs, I'm, I like them even more the day after the experience because I just, it's sinking in how cute they were. I just can't believe. We saw hedgehogs, we saw otters, which were very energetic, extremely strong teeth as we learned. Yes. I, I am feeling a little guilt, a little otter guilt. I'm like, okay, the hedgehogs, they're fine in their little pen, but those otters with their little three foot by three foot swimming pool, I'm like, this, I feel a little guilty. 
I, I'd like to think that they're treated decently well. They at least seemed happy. They were very happy. Yeah. And then some chinchillas, mm-hmm. which was which was adorable. And what was the other one? The giant rabbit. The giant rabbit. Mm-hmm. How much do you think that thing weighed? I mean, it was 50% fluff, so it's probably lighter than one would expect, but he was, he was a big boy. Huh? You could tell he didn't miss any meals. Any other observations about Tokyo or Japan in general that you say was vastly different than the United States? Or I should say California. Just, just the fact that all the, all the marketing here, all, all subtlety is thrown out the window. It's just like whoever is the loudest and the most colorful wins the day. It's like, it's impressive seeing like a, a life-size to scale Godzilla head poking out the side of a building and jumbotrons with, with like mega-sized cats playing around. Like it, it's it's a, a sensory experience for sure. You and I have also enjoyed seeing the enlarged plastic versions of foods. Your favorite being the large soft serve ice cream cone. Yes. And today we saw an enormous dumpling. I like to know what I can expect for going in a restaurant. And then you've got these beautiful plastic displays of the food. I'm like, we need to make this a thing in America, please. You and I were talking about how, you know, on the topic of marketing, it is so interesting to see how docile, for the most part, people here are walking around day to day in their daily lives. And to see advertisements on TV as we're watching the Dodger game that are just so over the top. I mean, laundry detergent commercials where the people in the commercial are given cartoon biceps. <laughs> Clearly the, the Japanese people have found a great outlet for all the pent up intensity that they evidently want to unleash <laughs> in the proper setting, which is on commercials and on doughboards and in anime. <laughs> Would you visit this country again? 100%. Like, I don't need to visit any other country. You can just, just make it to Japan every time, every vacation. Well, you, you heard it here, folks. Ricky san has spoken. Now enjoy 30 seconds of rain sounds, which we recorded in the garden in the Imperial Palace in Tokyo, which I would say was my favorite part of the entire trip. To the last nerve for the departing flight, we are now waiting for clear down and expect them to depart in a ball to turn later. We're on the plane now on our way back to the United States of America. It's been a great trip, been a good time. I do want to take a moment to ask Ricky about his thoughts on Japanese fashion Man. and specifically the differences in fashion, or should I say the non-differences in fashion between men and women? Then, so, what, what did you observe from seeing the fashion in, in Japan? Sometimes it can be a little challenging to distinguish the men from the women. That being said, everyone is, is, is highly fashionable, though I don't think I would adopt some of the fashions I saw. The best, some of the men like to wear the, these oversized, kind of almost dress-like t-shirts that have like this like plunging neck, neck, neckline. A big baggy pants are very much in. And then you have some women who, who dress like anime characters. We did see that. Wasn't sure if that was like a Halloween's coming thing or if that's just like, no, that's how I dress. But, but then you have, you have 
just the, the really classy dress of people. Jean. You know, like the men are all but it, yeah. the like the salary men are all walking around in their nice suits. They have some have like those little those little hats that every man in America wore in the fifties. And then and then you've got the, the women who some are some are wearing like their traditional Japanese garb, what do you call those? The kimonos. Right, right. Yeah. It's a very interesting dress. I will say in general, Japanese seem, people seem to dress classy, definitely classier than oh, Americans. No doubt. You, even just going about shopping at the mall, walking around with friends, you don't really see what you call the athleisure wear, which we see all over the United States. No. Yoga pants, any men wearing tank tops and that exactly. sort of thing. And it's not just in Tokyo either. Like you could think, like, oh, well, Tokyo's the like, high fashion metropolitan area, but I would say it, the same hell to Kyoto and Osaka as well. People are well put together. What were your thoughts on some of the men carrying what seemed to be a purse, but were really just male handbags, I guess? You know, one man's purse is another man's European carry-all. Just call it a different name, and then it instantly becomes masculine. What is one fashion accessory or style that you saw here in Japan that you wish were more common in the U.S.? Or maybe I should say more acceptable. Because if I went around walking around Orange County and carrying a male handbag, I'd probably get some looks. How about, like, the... You know what I would love to be more acceptable? The sun umbrella, sir. Oh, there I you go. The there umbrella. you go. But if you're a man in America and using a sun umbrella, you're finished. So that would be cool if that was socially acceptable in America. Uh, we got a PA announcement going. Let's uh, put a quick pause on the interviews. In reference to sun umbrellas, I mean, one can argue if you are not using a sun umbrella, you're screwed. That's. That's what I've been trying to argue this whole time. 